Welcome to the Metal Detecting Podcast, brought to you by XP Metal Detectors. We're digging the plugs and pinpointing the topics you want to hear. Now, here's your hosts, Dave Kimball and Grant Hansen. This show is brought to you by XP Metal Detectors. XP Metal Detectors is a high-end, innovative metal detector company with great machines and great pinpointers. For more information, go to xpmetaldetectors.com. For a dealer near you, try a Google search or go to xpdeus-usa.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Detecting Podcast, brought to you by XP Metal Detectors. I am your host, Dave Kimmel, coming to you from Central Oklahoma, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Grant Hansen, coming to you from New Jersey, back, shall I say, to New Jersey. Or actually, now you're in Denver right now, aren't you? You're all over. <laughs> yeah, I'm all over the place. I was up in the Adirondacks, then off to Denver, um, and then back to Jersey. So I'm pretty tired, but uh, I've been getting to see uh, quite a couple different environments, so it's been fun. Oh, yeah. So how was the uh, Pound of the Ground hunt that you got back from? Pound of the Ground was pretty awesome. Um, you know, we we struggled with some windy weather and our tent setups and everything like that, but when it all came together, we had a wonderful setup f- for X. XP metal detectors. Gary Blackwell was out there. He was doing demos. He was talking to people. We had some great giveaways. Um, it was just a great team environment. You know, the property that Pete Sorrell kind of uh, got for the event really, really produced. I mean, there was colonial coppers coming out of the ground. There was revolutionary war buttons coming out of the ground. Um, 1800 stuff. Really, really cool finds. Um, so I think everyone who went really enjoyed it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And there are a lot of cool people always out there. A lot of great metal detectorists. A lot of well-known names that you see on Facebook all the time and YouTube. Yeah, and, and it was good, uh, you know, seeing everybody. And, and we were a metal detecting community. It wasn't like, oh, we're brand this, we're brand that. You know, we hung out with King George and Ringy for a little bit. And, you know, Dave Wise and the Whites guys. It was great to meet them. You know, also great to meet Riley Bryant and Butch Holcomb from American Digger. Um, you know, it, it was a good opportunity to meet people that you've been virtual friends with for a while while and then just have kind of that face-to-face conversation like you said we're a metal detecting community so uh, a lot of us you know we are brought to you by xp metal detectors but we're not uh, just going to be talking about xp metal detectors so that brought us to a name change and a bunch of changes to the podcast so now on we're not known as xp team usa we are now known as the metal detecting podcast and we are brought to you by xp metal detectors yeah and i think the name change is is important you know it's still going to be me it's still going to be dave talking metal detecting but we we want people to know that even though we represent XP Metal Detectors and XP Team USA, this isn't necessarily a brand specific podcast. We talk about everything and we want to include everybody in that conversation. Oh, yeah. So just to keep the confusion down, we've changed the name and we even changed the look of the podcast. We've got a brand new studio here, too. Yeah, it's very exciting. You know, it's uh, innovation and keeping up with technology and that constant strive to make things better. Um, so I'm excited about it. We were talking earlier about uh, October and uh, doing some stuff. I took the kid out to get her, her uh, Halloween costume uh, just the other day. And um, have you you've taken your kid to get Halloween costume so far? Haven't you? Yeah, every year we do a family uh, costume. So this year my daughter wanted to be Moana. So we've got her costume. I'm going to be Maui. Uh, so I'm getting to wear this like skin tight body suit that has tattoos all over it. And, now we wake. and my wife is going to be Hey Hey, which is the rooster. Um, so we love it. We we go for it every year. So um, I'm excited for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My granddaughter is going to do the witch thing this year. And, oh, nice. Yeah, I think she's may- she mostly wants to put on like black lipstick and all that. She's like <laughs> six years old. So she <laughs> she thinks it's pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's so much fun, especially when you're a kid, you know, trick or treating. And, you know, our town does both 
a trunk or treat on the weekend and then, you know, town trick or treating, you know, on actual Halloween. So Mm. now the kids get twice as much opportunity to get candy. Oh yeah. Yeah. So speaking of Halloween and and stuff spooky and everything, have you ever had any, uh, thing creepy or spooky happen to you while metal detecting? Yeah, I did actually A, a very interesting story. Um, so my friend James and I were metal detecting on a property that was built in 1802 and it was originally used as an inn. Um, So we're really excited to get out there and and dig some stuff. And we found some really cool things. And one of the things that James found was a button. And we didn't really know what it was when we found it because it was dirty and it needed to be cleaned up and identified. So, you know, we showed the owner everything we found and said, hey, you know, once we clean everything up and identify it, we'll let you know. So he cleaned it up and, you know, he called me and said, hey, you know, it's it's a Civil War general services button. I'm like, all right, right, that's pretty cool. So I called the owner to tell her. And when I told her that there was a pause and she's like, you're not going to believe this, but I woke up at about three in the morning and standing in front of my bed was a man in a Civil War uniform, and then he vanished instantly. And I was like, whoa. I think I said, maybe that's his button. I'm bringing it back to you. I think it needs to stay with the house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it was a pretty cool story and a pretty cool experience. How about yourself? Anything spooky ever happened to you? Uh, nothing really uh, spiritual or anything like that. I mean, like ghosts or anything. I'm never really big on believing into ghosts and, and mm-hmm. all that uh, all that stuff. But I, I like the scary movies and i like the uh stuff like that but what really creeps me out you know is the the psychos that are out there the crazy people <laughs> that are like you know <laughs> the thrasher flicks you know and i've had a lot of times where i'm metal detecting in really weird spots that i just feel like somebody's there watching me like you know and it's it that is a creepy creepy feeling like there's a uh old um uh, Salem Asylum, not too far down from me, that's been closed down for years. And uh, I got actually, there's a couple around here. And uh, one of them, I came over and asked the guy if I could uh, metal tech one of the groundskeeper. And, uh, and the grounds are owned by the city of Norman. And uh, so I asked one of the groundkeepers that was over there if he would mind if I would metal detect around there and stopped real quick. And he looked at me and no, nobody could metal tech on these grounds. He said, The uh, city of Norman specifically said that any trash on this on the grass or anything belongs to Norman and they don't want anybody digging around. And mm-hmm. I told that to a friend of mine and he was telling me that he heard that back in the thirties, there was a big fire there and they buried a lot of the people that died in there around on the grounds right there, right around the building. So oh, yeah, wow, that's pretty weird. But yeah, there was another one that uh, we got permission at and we were hunting that. And while I was hunting it, I just felt the whole time, like somebody was watching me the whole time, you know, like somebody, it looked like to me, like somebody was living inside the like broke into the place and was living in it, you know and that's what i kind of felt like the whole time like somebody's gonna jump up and like slash my throat or something behind my back you know <laughs> yeah you know it's it could be scary sometimes you know like i felt that eerie feeling detecting in the woods sometimes you know you, you've got headphones on and sometimes they they cancel out everything outside and you're alone and and kind of vulnerable right so right. you're kind of looking around and you're like somebody watching me am i okay here <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Right. Either even wild animals being out there, you know, they could be like a bobcat or or something like that that feels threatened or or you get yeah. close to their their young, you know. A lot a lot of the towns I detect in um are getting coyotes now. And um, so far, they've been attacking small dogs, but you know, you got to keep your eyes open for that. Right. Yeah. 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 Most of the but, time, uh, they'll run away. But if you if they feel threatened or cornered, or if you're around their young or something, they you know they will attack. Yep, definitely. Um, and I, I'd love for anyone listening to tell any spooky stories that you might have in the chat. It'd be interesting to see what uh, all you guys have experienced. Right. Yeah. So today's guest, we got um, back from Adirondack and at the pound of the ground hunt and they're here to talk about it and they're the guys who ran it we got uh nathan matthews and jeff muthers ball we will talk to them a little bit and see what they got to say yeah i think for anyone who was there um they'd love to hear their perspectives but even though for those who didn't make pound the ground um to hear the stories that they're going to have to tell um i'm sure they're going to offer some really good insight and maybe um kind of a, a, a sneak peek into what's coming for next year oh yeah so when we be back we'll talk to them we'll See ya.
This is Michael from XP Metal Detectors Americas. Be sure to check out the new XP ORX Metal Detector, model starting at $649. We'd like to welcome two guys to the show that have pulled off an incredible accomplishment. Co-host of America's largest organized metal detecting dig, along with Adirondack Detecting, we'd like to introduce from Rhode Island Relics, Nathan Matthews and Jeff Muthersball. Welcome to the show, guys. Welcome. Hey, thank yeah, you for thank having you. us. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. And and thanks to both of you, your whole entire team, Pete Sorrell from Adirondack Detecting. You guys hosted an amazing event. Now, we're not that far removed from the Pound the Ground event in the Adirondack, so I imagine you guys are still pretty tired. Jeff, how often have you slept? Uh, going up to it, not much. I think uh, when we got back, I think it was like crash zone, man. We had, yeah. we had quite a bit of cleanup still to do. So we didn't actually leave there until later on Monday. So, um, yeah, by the time we got home and unpacked everything and, and squared away things, oof, man, we were we were burnt out. Yeah, we were totally burnt out. I know me personally, I haven't got much sleep since then because we were gone for five days or so. And I came back. I've got twins. I've got a 14-year-old. I, I have to be on top of making sure that I'm there for them. So I haven't really slept much. Yeah, as, as far as cleanup went, I mean... I mean, I know some of uh, the tents got destroyed, ours included, um, but it seemed at least the vendors and the sponsors there were doing a pretty good job of at least making piles and not leaving a ton of debris just scattered about. Did you find that all the attendees, um, you know, kept it neat and respectful? Oh, absolutely. When we walked the fields afterwards, I felt like I did most of the trash. I, I pulled a lot of the trash out of the barrels and there were some like stray items on the ground, but for the most part everyone was extremely respectful and they took care of the land so uh what could have taken forever took a lot less time that's great it was the uh it was a hurricane wind that got us that's what that's what that's what right. caused the chaos right yeah i've seen some of that yeah so take us through the, uh the few days leading up to the event let's say around wednesday getting to the field setting up campers were you feeling more excitement or more anxiety oh god uh, jeff do you want me to take this one and then you can also uh, uh, chime in afterwards? Yeah, go for it, my friend. Well, for me personally, that Wednesday uh, was a nightmare. I'm not going to lie. There was a lot of stuff going on, including some of the shipments that were supposed to be there from our sponsors were not there on time. I had to chase UPS drivers down. I had to get all that stuff situated. Then we had to load the freight truck. We had to load the RV. There was a lot of stuff to get done. Ultimately, I think we pulled it together last minute. There were still some things that we needed to do to make sure uh, the event would go off without a hitch. And I think we, we pulled it together. I mean, I don't know how we did it, but we certainly did it. And uh, our team definitely came to... Uh, to the forefront when it when it came to fixing everything and making sure everything was situated for the event everybody's main focus was to make sure that everyone that attended had a good time and and, and i think we pulled it together i would say on the on the wednesday for me life was pretty good until i got into that uh, into that box truck which was <laughs> which was oh, oh my god was that thing rickety as all get out man so yeah by the time i got up there i was pretty shaken from driving in that thing but um not a lot of nerves on my part until uh we did a lot of pre-setup on Wednesday, so we were looking pretty sharp on Wednesday already um, by the nightfall, and um, we woke up Thursday morning and we, and we basically got a, a oh crap moment when we realized the, the, the wind that whipped through there at night, and a ton of our stuff got ripped down, and uh, some manufacturers' tents were kind of mangled a little bit, and we said, oh no, we got problems. Yeah, we were one of those tents, uh, <laughs> XP Team USA. Yeah, yes, I... you were. Yes, XP definitely <laughs> got, definitely got the brunt of it but i'll tell you yeah. you know we were resilient and you guys you know the staff of pd ptg really stepped up and helped us we didn't feel like we were in it by ourselves and just kind of like us oh, what are we going to do Every, everyone came together to help each other well, well i'll tell you right now brian bissonette who is um he's been one of my best friends since i was a very very 
young guy. That guy is a genius, man. And and when I say that, like he could he could fix anything. And his goal was, I'm gonna go over to the XP Team USA tent and I'm gonna work with Gary Blackwell and we're gonna get this thing fixed. And you know what? I think he did an amazing job and I was so proud of him for it. And he like, you know, he he that wasn't something that he was hired to do. He just did it to make sure that you guys mm-hmm. were all set. And I think he did a wonderful job with it. He he really did. And they were there's a lot of a uh, MacGyver-esque kind of skills going on, putting things together right. with pieces from other things. So um, right. it, it was really cool. So, yeah, again, yeah, uh, we appreciated that. Um, yeah, he's fantastic, that guy. Yeah. And I know you could. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, give no, no, I'll give it to Brian. I'll give it to Brian. Yeah, he's good. Um, and, and while you couldn't necessarily protect us or some others from the winds, um, you actually had some people sleeping on site overnight in campers just to make sure everything was safe and sound and protected anyone like us who had set up early to make sure that you know nothing was going on um, I, I don't know that i've seen that before in an organized dig so um wh- what made you uh uh, think about doing that uh we didn't really well, think about anything to be very <laughs> honest we thought about we thought about what we could provide but people that came to the event were so die hard and amazing and they were there just to help us out with every little detail if we ran out of wood people brought wood for our fire because they knew that we were camping overnight and we needed fire i mean it was the, the people that were there that were there to really experience the event they they loved it and they did everything they could to help us. It was absolutely incredible. I mean, I, I don't even, I don't know anything like that that's ever taken place. I mean, I've run pound the ground events in the past and nobody stepped up like these people stepped up this time around. It was absolutely incredible. Well, I think it was important too for us to be on the field because, I mean, we did have a lot of money in the ground. So um, we were definitely putting eyes on that field throughout the night. And, um, you know, it, even though we were on site, I mean, I woke up at about 4.30 one morning, actually Saturday into Sunday, took a, took a jaunt around the field and everything was secure and good. About a half hour later, one of our guys, Alex, wakes up and he's like, oh my God, it happened again, you know? So <laughs> the fact that we were off and taking shifts walking uh, didn't really matter. Like y'all were talking about, the winds were pretty strong and, and, and destroyed a lot of tents. And But the highlight in that, from what I hear and what I saw on Facebook and read, uh, is a lot of metal detecting community, no matter what brand you were loyal to, really stepped up and helped each other out in that situation it was really show uh really showing a solidarity right well, I think it, that, that was that incredible. Was, uh, yeah, that was key for us too, planning it, that we wanted everybody to get together. We didn't want um, anybody to be excluded from the event. We wanted everybody to have a presence, you know, and bring all the communities together, all the different metal detectors, no matter what you were rocking out there. Yeah. So what was y'all's biggest challenge leading up to the inaugural cannon firing to start off the event? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, there were so many, so many things. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one, it's letting the world know in, in, in advance, anyhow, that we are putting on the largest metal detecting event in America. It's real tough to hear that and believe it. You know, it, it, it was real tough for people to be to understand that it was worth the travel. Yes, you can go to Detectable in the UK. You can do that sort of thing, and, and it's going to be a massive event. But the main focus of the event was I, uh, myself personally, Jeff, uh, Peter, we, we go to Detectable, and it's a massive event, and it's amazing, but it costs a lot of money to go. It's a lot of money to be there in another country, and our global timeline may not be as long as theirs, but our history is, is just as important. And to Americans, uh, the, the history we have in the ground, uh, it really is a motivator for everybody. And I, I think that ultimately the, the idea that we had to put on this massive event, it was tough for people to believe that it was going to be something that we achieved. But um, they came through. I'm telling you, man, the, the, the day of the event, we sold ridiculous amounts of tickets. People finally decided we're just going to go. We're going to make it happen. And then it turned out to be the most incredible event ever. We could not complain. It was just absolutely nuts. Everybody was like okay with each other. 
other. There was no manufacturer that nobody liked. There was no discrimination on anybody's part. It was incredible, man. It was just such a cool thing to see all these metal detectorists with different metal detectors. They just, there was no issue. Everybody, everybody just got along. It was incredible, man. And that's the main focus. So I think, I think a first day challenge for us too was the fact that we were up about 5 a.m. and we kind of came out of our tent and or trailer and we already had people parking on the field. So we were like, whoa. <laughs> So we had to jump out there and start rearranging. So we were, you know, we lost a few of us just to go do some parking. And the, in the first day, I wanted to be out on the field greeting everybody. So I'm like, well, let me jump on parking um, and get this going because I wanted to, you know, give a friendly hello to everybody coming in. So, yeah, that caught us with our pants down a little bit. We didn't expect people to be there that early. Yeah, well, I guess they were very excited. Um, but, I, you know, and I have to say, other than the win that, the couple nights, and it, they, it wreaked a little bit of havoc on us. But overall... We were really blessed with nice weather. I mean, Saturday was probably ideal. You couldn't ask for anything better than Saturday. And even though Sunday was windy and a little bit chilly in spots, um, it was dry. And I, I think that's really what you hope for. Yeah, I think we yeah, lucked out. I mean, the wind you know, was being the time of yeah. year up there and all. I think we, I think we, uh, we dodged a huge bullet on that one. We, we have definitely learned from the weather there yeah. that we are not going to participate in another event in that area during that time uh -huh. we have uh we're basically what we're doing now is we're putting together an, another pound the, uh, a pound the ground event in a large area that's going to work very well for us weather wise yeah with the uh natural hunt you can never really guarantee that anybody will find anything good and uh pete sorrell provided some pretty amazing property with amazing potential uh, but you were i bet you were pretty relieved when you started hearing about uh some of the awesome finds out there i hear there are really good finds that were produced that that was my biggest concern i'll, I'll be dead honest with you you know because we can't guarantee the land and i mean peter did do a spot sweep on that land to make sure there was stuff in the ground and there was so you know we're going off of his word he's the guy up there we trust him you know so when stuff started pouring out of the ground there i was i definitely wiped my brow agreed yeah you know and it's funny too i didn't get out right away uh probably about an hour after the cannon but when you were walking on i think it was field six that was adjacent to where we were you saw like all the clusters of people so i'm like all right that's that must be where the stuff's coming out because somebody wants to holler that they got something good and everyone flocked around them <laughs> well, i was telling people they had to our field 13 because there was some good that's stuff coming out of that field yeah there was definitely good stuff coming out of that out of that field however i think that a lot of the people that did their research on mm -hmm. the land they found the best locations and they pulled out the most incredible stuff i mean we have a video up right now from one of those people from canada on the rhode island relics.com page they killed it they absolutely killed it it was absolutely amazing so uh i mean the stuff was there it's just a matter of you know you want 500 people around you or you want 20 people people around you it's up to you like where you want to go but everywhere killed it and i gotta give peter all the credit for that because none of us knew about that land except for peter he pulled that permission together and he made it happen for us so i'm very happy it turned out the way that it did cool. yeah yeah, and I, you was, know, I was blessed that I got to I got to do a little walking around. We did have the uh, whole secret prize hoodie thing going on, so you know I got to take to the fields and you know talk to people out there and give them some stuff. So it was, it was nice to see some of that stuff coming out of the ground. Yeah, my buddy uh, was wearing a PTG uh, uh, hoodie and, and he got spotted and he won a um, a giant uh, magnet. Now he's going to get into magnet fishing. He was really excited. Oh, you know he did because I put it in his hand. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, and, and for those who may not have found relics or War of 1812 stuff or anything like that, um, they did have the opportunity with the seated hunt. And, and from what I saw, um, everyone who did that had had some really good success. They walked around, walked away with some really good and sometimes really big silver. Um, what was your feedback that you got from the seated hunt? Um, 
I guess I'll cover that because um, for the most part, I want to say 99.9% of the people that participated in the seated hunt had a blast. They were like, oh my God, I can't believe you guys put all this stuff out there. And of course, there's the naysayers, man. There's always the guys that are like, they don't have their coil over the silver and they're upset that they're not finding anything and whatever. The truth is, we've been doing these events for quite some time now. We expect it at every single single event. The truth is we can't control if you get your coil over it or not, man. But I'll tell you what, we had 14 people feeding coins and it took forever. And we put some of these coins, man, we threw on the surface. That's how that's how you could find them. It was so simple to find them. We threw large silver on the surface, like just threw it out there because at that point we were like, oh my God, we're so we're so deep into the hours of planting this silver. Let's just make it easy for people. But it's 30 acres, man. If you're on 30 acres and you haven't got your coil over it and you're complaining about it after 15 minutes, mm. man, you got to be out there for a lot longer. You got to get your coil over it. Believe me, it was there. We put it in the ground. We did everything we possibly could. And 99.9% of the people that were there had a blast. Well, That's I'll awesome. tell you what gave me a little bit of a chuckle on the seated field. You know, I, I kind of positioned myself out there in the area that I seated. So I knew exactly what was in the ground where uh, where I was. So, you know, I was watching people pull stuff up. I was watching people miss stuff. But we had um, also GPSed out the uh, gold coins and the nuggets. So, uh, you know, I walked myself out there, lined up the GPS with the gold nugget and went back about six feet from where the gold nugget was. I watched 20 people in an hour and a half walk over that thing <sighs> and not dig it. And, and I was just wow. I, I was just saying, wow, you know, when you're on a seated field, man, you got to dig. Yeah. Right. Dig every signal you could possibly find. Mm-hmm. Especially if you know there's gold out there, so you got to dig the mid Right. Column. Yeah, and we didn't mess around with the gold. We put gold nuggets in the ground that were worth $1,150. I mean, there was a lot of stuff out there. It's a matter of whether or not you're the guy that's willing to take the time to put your coil over it and find it. You know what was cool, though? There was, there was one guy that came up to us, and I believe he was on the seated field, and, and he pulled out this really cool relic, like this little horse relic out of the seated field. I mean, we didn't put it there, so yeah, there, you know, some of the natural yeah. stuff that came out of it. Remember that, Nathan, that fellow with the horse? Yeah, man, that was awesome. He had a horse face. Huh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, speaking of that, so uh, what were each of your highlights from that weekend, and what stood out in a good way? For me, it well, was for, the turnout. Well, ahead, it, for me, absolutely was the turnout. Um, we did not expect, in, in no way, shape, or form, did we expect the amount of people to be participating in this event. I'll tell you right now that, like, a few weeks before the event, I was a little nervous. I was like, ah, I'm not sure how many people are going to be here. We're really trying to make this a big thing. And then uh, the the last week of this event, uh, the, the days before the event, all of the tickets were flying off the shelves and we we're like, oh my God, like people really love this. That for me, that was the most exciting thing to see all of these detectorists across America. And right now, I think we have detectorists from every state in the United States as well as the Tetris from across the globe. So hmm. I think we did okay. I think it's a it's a thrill, too, for us. I mean, we're a relatively young club, if you will. So to see everybody out there in Rhode Island Relics gear was, was pretty cool for me, you know? And uh, was the beer truck popular? I saw a few guys and gals uh, taking advantage of that. <laughs> it certainly was. I remember yeah. I was over there, and uh, Jocelyn Elizabeth was like, hey, Nathan, let me get you a beer. And I was like, no, I really you know like during this event i probably shouldn't drink or anything whatever uh yeah i got a beer anyways and it was awesome and um it was just cool to see that people like had that option and you know what i'm gonna give all that credit to jeff muther's bob because without that guy we never would have had valcor brewing we wouldn't have had the uh drum and fife band with the bagpipes. Uh, I mean, Jeff really killed it on this event, guys. If I can say that over and over again, I think he was the number one 
for making sure that the entertainment for the event was solid. Jeff definitely did that. Well, it's my pleasure because that it was, you know, I always want to go somewhere. I think that was important for like when we started and Nathan and I started talking about this event from the get go, you know, I, I am, I am kind of a curmudgeon when it comes to uh, metal detecting events. You know, you, you, you really got to put something out there that that's going to pique my interest for me to want to come out. So, um, you know, I, I thought about all the things that I would want to see. And I said, well, that's what I'm going to get. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what we did. And we'll be right back with Nathan Matthews and Jeff Muthersball. If you are looking for more information about XP products such as dealers or updates, then check out MetalDetectorsAmericas.com. Hello, this is Daniel from XP Metal Detectors Americas, and I just wanted to let you know about the XP Metal Detectors Americas.com website, which is full of information on the KUS Metal Detector and the ORX Metal Detector. Both are wireless and do all aspects of metal detecting, which is gold processing, coins, jewelry, and relics. We are back, and we are talking with Nathan Matthews and Jeff Muthersball. So you had beer, live music, food, metal detecting. I really feel like I missed out a lot. So were the food trucks? They were pretty good too. Were the vendors pretty happy that they participated? Oh my god, yeah, they, man! They, the food trucks were awesome. Yeah. The food was so they, they good. They killed it and, out there. I mean, yeah, they killed it, man. Their food was incredible too. I was like. I got a double, and I don't, I'm keto friendly, so I don't eat any bread normally. But these burgers look so incredible. I, I got a double cheeseburger with bacon, and I got, they gave me some like cider donuts for free, and I was like, mother of God, this is the greatest of food, greatest food of all time. Yeah, I was enjoying the gyro guy on the second day. I had his gyros. I was really, is it a yeah, gyro yeah. or is it a gyro, right? It, it, I'm offended by the entire yeah. food population right now. Uh, yeah, I'll always call it a gyro, but they'll tell you it's gyro, but whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, yeah. man, as long as we're buying it, who cares? Right. <laughs> you know, and, and getting back to the live entertainment, Nathan, I believe it was your daughter who was up on stage playing guitar and singing, and and I I, yes. I thought she was amazing. Uh, was it Thank difficult? Thank you to, so much. Yeah. And was it was it difficult to get her to persuade her to perform in, in front of the crowd, or was she up? Oh for it? no, not at all. My daughter daughter and I, so I don't know if you guys know this about my history, before I did all of this metal detecting stuff and I became completely obsessed, thank you Jeff Muthersbaugh, um, I did, I played music professionally that was my life, I, I mean in my personal bands and playing for other major bands throughout my history or whatever um, my daughter and I, I, I taught her music from the get go, when she was a little child, when she was three years old, I started teaching her music and uh, now she's just absolutely incredible. She's she's phenomenal, and I had no question as to whether or not I was going to have her the, at this event. I mean, she's she's nuts. She's she's amazing. And uh, no matter what events we put on in the future, I will always have my daughter on board because she is something phenomenal. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, she she is amazing. I'll I'll give her that. So we were we were very blessed to have her because I think she had a. Uh, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, she was previously engaged uh, for another yeah. uh, event, right? And then yeah, she had something another gig she was able and to come she off. gave it up for us. Oh, yeah. that's great. She, she had another gig and she gave it up for us. And um, I asked her last minute to sing the Star Spangled Banner. And she was like, Dad, I wasn't preparing for this. I can't <laughs> do this. And I was like, yeah, you can do it. No problem. And she killed it, man. She's amazing. She's mm. nuts. My 14-year-old daughter is way better than i could ever hope to be i yes. live uh, through her vicarious i saw a uh, live uh stream i think grant was doing that where she yeah, was singing was that me. yes that was that was awesome it sounded great yeah so so what did this overall experience teach you and what do you want to make sure that you continue doing and what do you want to change for next year God, there are so many things that I learned. There are so many things that I learned, and it's it, God. Uh, everyone had an opinion, and if you know Rhode Island Relics and Pound the Ground, 
we take everybody's opinion into consideration. So um, this time around, a lot of people had a little thing, like little things we needed to work on. One, we will never, ever have a meet and greet ever again that does not have enough room for all of our guests. We did not oh, expect, yeah. yeah, we did not expect that amount of people to come out to our meet and greet, and we had to shut it down. Oh, wow. But I want everyone to understand, we did not want to shut it down. The police literally came up to me and said, if you don't shut this down, we are going to arrest. And I said, okay, let's shut this down. Because no offense <laughs> to anybody, I'm not going to jail. That's not a thing I want to do. So, um, yeah, next year we're going to have our uh, next year. Yeah. Uh, whenever we do our next pound the ground, which is coming up, um, our, our huge pound the ground, I am not going to have a meet and greet at a place where I need to worry about the amount of people that can be there. We're going to run it on our own. We're going to have food truck vendors. We're going to have a brewery. We're going to have everything to make sure everyone is comfortable at the next event. Yeah, I think that that was our first and foremost because we had we had quite a, a group meeting the other night. So I mean, we ran through a bunch of stuff that we um, that we need to button up a little bit, you know. <clears throat> but for, for the event this size and the amount of people that we had, um, I think we I think we fared uh, pretty well. I think one of my sticklers was we we did offer a pretty generous club discount. Um, um, where we were supposed to have a volunteer for every five um, club members that got the discount, oh, and, yeah. and and we did not really have too many uh, clubs uh, turn up to uh, assist us with anything um, other than enjoying the discount. So, you know, we did a fair share more running around than maybe we wanted to, mm-hmm. and um, we won't be making that mistake either. All right. Yeah. Right. And, and no, no offense to any of the clubs that participated. Some of these people were absolutely amazing, and they set up really amazing booths. But the purpose of having the clubs there was to have them as volunteers. And uh, I'll tell you right now, crystal clear, and I'm not being mean, I'm just being honest. We had zero volunteers. Mm. We had zero volunteers for any of our clubs. And we offered them a discount so that they could be there and help us out. None of them, zero of them, attended our event and helped out. So we know in the future, it's unfortunate, and it's not something we want to do, but the reality is we really tried this year to make sure that the clubs would be happy with us and we could work with them, but none of them, nobody, nobody, zero volunteers attended. You know, I I will add an addendum to that, Nathan, because, you know, our, our clubs that did come out and that did set up, um, you know, uh, display tents and this, that, and the other, you know, when we had that kind of time where they would have volunteered for us, I think they were kind of in the same boat um, as us with trying to kind of rectify the wind situation from their, uh, right. um, yeah, you're right up the night up. before, you know, so we, we, we did have some clubs, you know, they, they were kind of in a sticky situation, but we had some other, so we had some clubs that were great, don't get us wrong, and I will say that we had some non-club members that had come out um before the event just stop by um the site and boy oh boy did they help us out man oh my god the arizona crew man those guys killed it they helped us with everything and they were not a club member they were just there to help us out it was nuts yeah we had a few people that just turned up the uh you know, on Friday and, uh, you know, whether it was, there was helping, uh, no, seed their field or helping us unload the trucks or doing this, that, and the other They they were, they were clutch. They were really good people. And we were super happy to meet them and hang out with them for a little bit. You know, right. I wonder, uh, would have like for next year or something like that, I wonder if y'all could have done something like a meet and greet for just the vendors and the people who were going to help. And it will cut down the people there. And plus, you, the people who are helping, you can kind of line them out on what they're supposed to be doing. And- well, next idea. year, we know for – go ahead, Jeff. I'll let you take this because I know Jeff has this in in his list of notepads stuff that he does well no yeah i mean i i I think with you know depending on how we go about things because we've got and we've got some things coming up in the future um we got a lot of things coming up in the future so depending on 
the caliber of event because we still want to do a New England pound the ground for everybody. We don't want to take um, our spring pound the ground out of New England. So we're, uh, we're looking at some New England locations for uh, April. So that'll be kind of a different animal. I think we might call that one pound the ground light. So it's going to be a little bit of a different animal. It might be a, a natural slash seeded hybrid type of event. So we're kind of tossing stuff around and we're looking for, again, October of the following year to do a larger scale pound the ground. And we've also got some stuff going on in England that's coming up after that. So we kind of got our docket full. We're, we're, we're just trying to hammer out some details now. So depending on the event that we're looking at, I think, you know, each thing is going to kind of take its own shape and form of what we end up doing. Gotcha. So I, I know you're, you've already started teasing, uh, you know, what, what information you might know for next year about possible, um, you know, a, a location that has a, a better guarantee of weather, timing, anything else you want to tease people about that's going to get them excited for 12 months from now. Well, well, I know I'll a lot take, of people uh, have been... So you want to take it? Take it? Yeah, no, I'll take it. I'll take got. it. So um, basically right now we're working with the uh, North Carolina Dirt Detectives. And um, we're trying to put together an amazing permission for that area. The weather around that time that we're trying to put together this pound the ground event is incredible. These guys have some amazing permissions, and we're trying to work on that. So uh, North Carolina or South Carolina, that's definitely going to be the next event. Mm. Um, It's going to be open to at least 1,500 people. Um, We don't know exactly how many acres we're going to have but right now that's where we're looking i have been really focused on the low country the low country has amazing history and i want to make sure that wherever we are we have a lot of natural history and of course we're going to seed the ground like we do normally it's it's you know it'll be an incredible event um we're not so people are aware we are not going to continue to put pound the ground in the same place over and over again. I know a lot of people ask, when are you coming back to New York? When are you coming back to Plattsburgh? Right now, we're not. Right now, the focus is making sure that every single event that we put on has the potential for more amazing natural history. And uh, it's real tough to do, but it's totally worthwhile. I mean, do you want to go back to the same place five times in a row and try to find natural history? We're not England, man. We're Mm -hmm. American. America. And the reality is our history is not that old compared to theirs. So we want to make sure that when you're out at our event, you have the potential to find incredible history in the ground. I will say North Carolina, South Carolina, low country is where we're where we're like we're focused on that right now and as soon as we get that together we're going to start promoting it and letting you guys know that's where it's going to be and uh you know it's going to be incredible no matter what we're going to put all of our effort in to make sure you guys have the best time ever i think it's it's real important for us well it's important for me i'm 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 a very big stickler about going somewhere with uh the potential for natural finds so that's that that's clutch piece for me that um, anybody that's going out there has the ability to find some uh, natural finds versus just a seeded area. So we're also looking into a spot in Connecticut right now. Some of our team members are helping us. Um, Alex and Gene, they're they're from down that uh, neck of the woods, and um, they're looking into some properties right now for our April event, which would be a, a smaller scale um, event, but it's still going to be a great time. Jeff, what do you call that event again? Oh, that would be Pound the Ground Light now with 50% more Jeff. <laughs> 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 How the ground light. It's amazing. Well, we are all, all really looking forward to it, and hopefully next year I'll be able to attend wherever we have it, um, wherever y'all have it. Um, I I know before we got on here, we were kind of talking about a little bit about uh, taking our kids out this weekend for uh, fall festivals and Halloween stuff. So Halloween is coming up. Uh, I have. Any of y'all ever had any uh, spooky thing happen to you while you're metal detecting? Well, uh, metal detecting. Uh, well I was metal detecting. I, uh, I lived in a house, man, that was that was haunted as all get out. So that's <laughs> a separate story. But I, I will tell you, I was down um, metal detecting near Gettysburg, you know, out in a track of land um, near some of the battlefields with a buddy of mine. Uh, Brandon, who's actually, uh, you know, on our team now. And um, I'll tell you, man, I was out in those woods and it got it got eerily silent. You know, 
all of a sudden I turned around, he's gone. I'm just out there by myself. I mean, there was not a peep happening in those woods. And I was like, wow, it was kind of dusk time. And I said, yeah, it's a little creepy. You know, I'm not, I'm not easily freaked out, but you know, it was, it was a little eerie with the, with the silence and, and just the, the way the light was falling. How about you, Nathan? Anything I, from you? I don't really have any creepy experiences with metal detecting in general. Um, I don't know, man. I'm okay. I, like I go out into the middle of a cornfield. It could be midnight. It doesn't make any difference to me. <laughs> My only issue is uh, coyotes, and that's it. I haven't had any crazy, like, ghostly experiences while I'm metal detecting, but I, I can tell you for certain, I will go out into the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night, and I will metal detect as long as I can use my my LED light on my head, and uh, I'll be good. I don't have any fears about anything like that at all whatsoever. But uh, Jeff, you know, being in special land where a lot of people passed away and whatever, that's for, you know, that's for him. I don't have any of those experiences. For me, I'm just like looking for buttons in the middle of the night that nobody can find. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I, think that, I think the scariest thing in the middle of the night for us, Nathan, is probably our own stupidity. Because there has been times that, that Nathan and I have been out in the middle of a wood, like digging out an old privy or something, and we're like six or seven feet down with headlamps on, and it's like two in the morning because we're like, why oh my not? God, you do you know? remember that, Jeff? Do you I remember, do remember that, that day, like, and I was like, we're, we're going to die in here. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were like six to seven feet in a privy in this extremely historic property, and just, you know, for me, like, I, I'm not really nervous about ghosts or anything like that, but uh, just the fact that we're in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night and uh, finding treasure, I don't know, it's exciting to me, anyhow. Mm -hmm. I, I always say, no no, no ghost is going to stop me from getting treasure. That's that's <laughs> right. <bad. laughs> if it's between treasure and a ghost, I, I'm not going anywhere. How many buttons did we pull out of that thing? What, all, out of that privy hole? Oh my god, we, we pulled all the buttons out of that thing. We, we, pulled, we pulled buttons out of, uh, yeah, that was that that was a civil. We we found I don't know if someone was pitching Civil War uniforms down there or what was brewing. Right. Mm. But we were pulling. Once we hit the bottom of that damn thing, we were we had a sister out there, so we were we were hauling dirt up in Home Depot bucket, uh, you know, on a little rope and pulley, and just <laughs> sifting them out. And it was like Button City. Wow. It was wow. It, that was yeah. a great night. That was a great night. I remember when the incredible. sun came up and we had all these buttons in there. I was like, oh, holy smokes, what did we do? Look at this. Wow. <laughs> were, you, were you able to able to see what they? They were when you were digging them out or you had to wait for sunlight yeah well a little bit because we had the headlamps on but you know once the sun came up you know him and i were just we i mean we we're we looked like two sasquatches or something we were covered in mud right. and grass and dirt and other things right. because we were in a privy well it's a good thing you didn't so, find yeah. the guy wearing a uniform huh <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah. kidding well, um, i will say one thing about a privy um i don't care if your poop is 250 years old it still smells like poop there's no question there's no question about it yeah you know exactly where you are man <laughs> well well i think that's the big note to uh start bringing this uh uh chat to, to a close um <laughs> wow I, i've never done it so i can't uh i can't speak from that experience well now i'm uh, hesitant to try <laughs> but um, oh man, I'll sniff out a garbage pit or a privy anywhere. Yeah, it is my favorite. Well, listen, we want to thank both of you guys for joining us again, especially so close to after you just wrapped up such a huge event. We know you're busy. We know you're tired. So we really appreciate it. Um, I'm excited to have gotten a chance to, to connect with you guys after the event because I personally was there and I had a wonderful time. So again, congratulations and um, thanks for everything. Well, thanks guys for having us. Thank you for having us on. Oh, yeah. It was and, great talking to y'all. And be checking out our YouTube video. We'll be having a recap of uh, Pound the Ground on uh, YouTube. Awesome. Yeah, send us a link. All, All right. Take All care, right, guys. guys. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thank you guys so much for everything. Check us out online at xpdais-usa.com.
XP Metal Detectors now introduces the new X35 search coils. Designed around a brand new electronic advances, these new high performance and versatile coils will allow you to choose from a wide range of frequencies, ranging from 3.7 kHz to 27.7 kHz. In total, there are 35 available frequencies based around five main frequencies that are quickly accessible. A new boost mode is now an option on frequencies 3.7 kHz to 4.4 kHz and can significantly increase detection depth on highly conductive targets such as large masses and large silver coins. The new X35 search coils will now be available as option as the same price as the previous coils and also now will be standard with the brand new Deus. So get your X35 today. All right, we're back. I wish I would have been able to make it to that one uh, maybe next year. Yeah, you know, you were definitely missed, but there in spirit, um, I think you would have enjoyed it. And, you know, whether it's that dig or something else, we got to get you out to the East Coast and uh, find some colonial artifacts. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. I know we got a lot of stuff planned for next year, and Dave DiNatelli was telling me a little bit about some stuff that we got planned. So I'm looking forward to a lot of that. So I think we're going to have a great year next year, and XP Team USA will be out there. Yeah, we're going to continue to do our thing. Thing and be good ambassadors of the metal detecting hobby and try to answer questions and, um, you know, promote it as best we can. So I'm um, really looking forward to finishing this year strong and heading into 2020. Yes. Um, also, we mentioned we, uh, the changes and everything on our podcast. We are now the Metal Detecting Podcast, and uh, we will be on metaldetectingmedia.com. That is a website that I have all kinds of podcasts and media uh, interactions in there. So go in there and and check us out and we will be showcased on that page as well as Spreaker and we're not going to be on YouTube anymore because we're going to be doing the uh, the videos for now on for the YouTube and the podcast will just be on the metaldetectingmedia.com and on Spreaker yep so uh, you know check us out there tell your friends and um, there's other great content on that site as well so um, a really worthwhile visit alright yeah and uh, I think we got some new videos that came out on YouTube a few of them a few of our uh, members have posted some on there and uh, go check them out and here soon we'll be having the pound of the ground video yeah i can't wait for that the xp team usa youtube channel has new videos from john tetro he found a bucket lister find always wonderful to see that lenny quellen has some new videos up there as well i'm working on some stuff so it's a really good place for fresh content and seeing different personalities um so please check it out give us a like make a comment on the page and you know ask a question we'll reply back um so we we hope you uh really enjoy what we're producing there all right yeah and uh let us know give us some feedback on what you think of the new look of the show and the new name and everything uh let us know and and uh, we'll try to uh we like to hear feedback back and we would like to try to uh, work with everybody and make changes for the best yeah user feedback listener feedback it's it's really important to us i mean we think what we're doing is good but um you are the listeners so any ideas any suggestions positive negative uh we want to hear it all right so we'll see y'all next show it'll be november 1st and you know what november 1st that will be a year this podcast has been on wow that went really really fast so what is that like 26 shows about uh i believe so right now well right now we are on 24 right now okay got it but we did take a month off too that's right that's right so um wow that's exciting you know congrats and happy anniversary yeah. so we'll see <laughs> everybody on november 1st see you sounds good take care get that permission put the coil to the soil and we'll catch you next time right here on the metal detecting podcast brought to you by xp metal detectors <laughs>